It is now my pleasure to call upon Brittany and Ashley Sachs, who will introduce our president's address. Michael Benjamin Sachs. Oh wait, before we begin, we wanted to take a second to thank you for, for asking us to introduce you before you speak this evening. It truly does mean so much to us, and we could not feel more honored. And to all of the delegates sitting before us, when Michael called to ask me and Brittany to introduce him, I responded with a question. I asked him if I could say whatever I wanted my mind, of course, maliciously going in a thousand different directions. But Michael's response was, Ashley, you need to take this seriously. So? Yes, yes sir. sir. We shall take this seriously, and we will not let you down. All right. Let's begin. Michael, Michael Benjamin Sachs. One year, 12 months, 52 weeks, 365 days. That is about how long we have had the pleasure of having Michael as our USY International President. That is a long time to have one person as your leader, and we know it provided many opportunities for you all to get to know Michael a little bit better, whether it be when he visited you this summer on USY on Wheels, or on USY Israel Pilgrimage, or during alternative spring break, springboards, or fall boards. <laughs> or at your regional conventions or encampments. Or at any one of the countless times in between, there is still a bit you may not know about Michael. So Ashley and I would like to take this opportunity to highlight and share just a few more things about your 2013 international president. First, Michael is extremely caring and loving. And to be honest, Michael loves his shoes. Now, he doesn't just love his shoes, he absolutely adores them. A single mark on a new pair of shoes is like the end of the world. So when Michael would get a new pair of shoes, every night he would take a baby wipe and clean his shoes perfectly so that the next day his shoes were as good as new. As a younger sister, I always thought Michael's care for his shoes was quite ridiculous. But I later learned this is a metaphor for the way he cares about his family and friends. Michael has taught us the golden rule, to treat others the way we want to be treated. He would never let anything happen to us, and that only makes us work even harder to be the best sisters we can be. After all these years, we have also noticed that Michael is truly one of a kind. Michael has always loved to cook and create his own food. Back in the day, Michael loved to eat mac and cheese. And like any other little kid, he also loved to eat that pink and purple Trix yogurt. But in true Michael fashion, he took this meal to the next level. Michael actually used to pour the yogurt onto the mac and cheese, <laughs> mix it up, and eat it together. <laughs> None of us understood why, and to this day, we still don't get it. But that didn't stop him from becoming an amazing cook. I can tell you, he makes the best mashed potatoes ever. But Michael has always had the gift of taking two incredibly different foods, or more generally, two completely, different, com two completely separate things, and creating something remarkable out of them. And for that, I respect and cherish how unique Michael is as an individual. Lastly, Michael's intellectual mind inspires us each and every day. Unlike normal families whose dinner conversations consist of recaps of daily activities and upcoming events, ours seem to exceed what should ever be considered normal. Typically instigated by Michael, and strangely always including valuable input from Spencer and Dylan, our conversations tend to drift towards things like political debates. We've analyzed decisions made by world leaders. We've debated the significance certain events have had on the course of American history. We've discussed solutions to crazy math problems. And we continue to debate whether As I Lay Dying by William Faulkner 
is the best book or the worst book ever written? And yes, Michael, I'm, I still win. It is the greatest book ever written. <laughs> but in all serious, Michael, you are incredible. You've amazed me and Ashley. Spencer and Dylan look up to you like no other. And mom and dad, I'm sure, are about to have te tears rolling down their faces because they are so proud. That is, if they haven't already started crying. Which, for the record, they have. <laughs> we are going to miss seeing you up here. We're going to miss the endless conversations about your dreams and aspirations for USY and how you are working to improve this wonderful organization. And I know we speak on behalf of the entire convention and all of United Synagogue Youth and the United Synagogue of Conservative Judaism when we say we have been truly lucky to have you as our president. Michael, you are inspirational. You are passionate. You are driven. You are talented. You are the best leader we know. You are the best president we know. You are the best big brother we know. And you're about to give the best presidential address USY has ever heard. USY, please stand up. Clap and cheer as we give the warmest welcome to, to your 2013 United, United Synagogue Youth International, International president, president, Michael Benjamin Sachs. If only everybody appreciated my culinary talents with gogurt and mac and cheese. U.S. wires, I speak to you today not as Michael Sachs, not as a member of the international board, but as a friend. When I look into the eyes of every individual inside this room, I am overwhelmed with gratitude for everything each of you has given me whether that be memories or, above all, inspiration. See, in USY, I found myself as a human being. I began to realize what type of person I hoped to become in the future, what type of friend I want to be, and how I want to relate to my Judaism. USY has enabled me to embark on a journey to discover the answers to the difficult questions in life. And so, I want to thank the people that have supported me on this journey. To the IC co-chairs, Jake and Gabby, you guys are truly one in a million. Your work this week has been incredible, and I know that you will succeed in anything you set your minds to. I am honored to call you two of my best friends, and congratulations on what has, so far, been a job unbelievably well done. To the International Executive Board, I am so proud of each of you and all that you have accomplished. This year has been phenomenal because of all your hard work, and I thank you for everything. To the International General Board, USY has greatly benefited from your leadership, and I want to thank you all for your creativity and persistence when it comes to making USY a better place. To the Regional Presidents, <laughs> it has been an honor and a pleasure to work with each of you this year. Though I am sad that our time together has come to an end, I am excited to see, that, see all that you will accomplish in the remaining months of your term. To the Far West Region and Temple Aliyah USY. Thank you for being a home away from home, and I will always be proud to say that I'm a Far West and Temple Aliyah USY. To AVB, Jake Stower, Bus C 2010, and Group 5 Eastern Europe Israel Pilgrimage, you are the reason I ran for board in the first place. Thank you for the best summers of my life. USY, take advantage of our, of our amazing summer programs because I can tell you from experience that they are transformative. To Michelle, to Benny, Abe, Amy, Matt Halpern, and all of the 820 staff, the time that I've spent just hanging with all of you, whether at an encampment, at ASB, or at board weekends, has taught me the value of teamwork. It is a privilege to work together with such a brilliant and inspired team of individuals. Though I am sad to leave my position, 
I know that the future of USY will always be in good hands. To Matan, Aaron Jacobs, David Helfand, Josh Ohl, past international presidents, each of you has had a profound impact on my life. You have been an incredible resource, and I hope that I am half as good a resource for those that come after me. Thank you for your, for your advice and for your guidance. To the, to the regional youth directors, thank you for welcoming me at encampments and regional conventions. And thank you for sharing with USY such amazing teams. USY, who's your favorite youth director? Okay, shh. <laughs> I won't lie. My favorites are Merrill and Darren. <laughs> Serving on regional board under you was an incredible learning experience. Thank you for your guidance and thank you for making Far West Region the very best it can be. I am so lucky to know you both. To the board of directors, Rabbi Steve Wernick, Marilyn Wynn, Cindy Hasit, Diane Novick, the Teen Learning Committee, and all those committed to the betterment of USY. Your vision and your support has been vital to the success of USY today, and it will be vital to the success of USY tomorrow. Thank you for your time, effort, and resources, for we appreciate all that you do. <laughs> to Rabbi Dave, thank you for being a mentor to me in so many ways. With your guidance, I have learned what it truly means to be a leader. You have helped me grow both as a person and as a Jew, as a leader and as a friend. To Lisa, wow, I don't even know what to say. Everyone give the director of International Convention a round of, a round of applause. Isn't she amazing? I am so grateful to have had the opportunity to work together with you your first year. And I know that the times we spent together will forever remain with me. And thank you to my siblings, Ashley, Brittany, Spencer, and Dylan. I know it's not always easy having me as a brother, but I am so grateful for all of your support. Thank you for everything, and I am proud to be a sax kid. And I would like to conclude my thanks with my parents. It is by the virtue of their sacrifice that I am able to call myself a U.S. wire, and it is by the virtue of their example that I challenge myself each and every day. Thank you, Mom and Dad. Now, USY, the reason I began with thank yous is because I am thankful that USY has allowed me to find friendship, to find a community that I hope to one day experience again when I grow too old to laugh, dance, rebuild, and rejoice here with you. To be completely honest, that is why I originally joined USY and kept coming back for more, because of the community and because of the friendship. In fact, that's why many of you are here today. Because through USY, we have developed friendships that span not just a few zip codes, but the entire country. I've made the best friends of my life here, and the memories that I've made in USY will last a lifetime. Every single one of my friends here, every single one of you, has made a profound impact on my life that I will never forget. USY has changed me for the better. You have changed me for the better. But as I began to write this speech and wonder what I was going to say, how I could define my entire USY experience in just a few short minutes, I found myself at what appeared to be an impenetrable wall. I wanted to write about community. I recently spoke with a family who used to live in San Diego, California. The parents were both former USYers and had only maintained contact with just a few of their former friends. All was well in San Diego until 2003, when wildfires ravaged Southern California, burning almost 750,000 acres of land and thousands of homes. CNN reported in October of 2003 that thousands of residents fleed for their lives with only 15 minutes warning as the fire's front line drew closer to residential neighborhoods. The family I speak of was one of those evacuated, and unfortunately, they lost everything. Their home burned. Their possessions destroyed. Their clothes limited to what they had on their very backs. But the USY community, the USY community remained strong. The family told me that upon speaking with one of their old USY friends who had reached out to them upon hearing of the fires, 
The family received financial support from USY chapters and Kehilot as far away as New Jersey. They were receiving help from people they had never even met, and that is the power of USY. That is the power of our community. I think it is incredible that the bonds of USY can withstand the destruction of fire and the ultimate test of time. But beyond this story, I found it difficult to discuss community. How do I put into words my, exper my experiences, my thoughts, my feelings, that incredible sense of community that we feel as we sit in this very room? It's incredibly difficult. And that is why I'm not going to talk about community anymore today. Because just as important as the community that USY inspires, are the individuals that USY inspires. The individuals who have gone on to make the world a better place in a number of different ways, through tikkun olam and through charitable giving, through random acts of kindness and through donating hair, through the giving of a quarter and through the giving of a smile. USY has had a profound impact on my, on my life and I would venture a guess and say it has on yours as well. Because USY, while being an organization that inspires that sense of community, also inspires a sense of self a sense of self-confidence that enables individuals to realize their true inner strength. USY is not always about the community, but is more often about the individual, about me, about you, about our unique responsibilities to make this world a better place. The theme of this weekend teaches us that we all have something to contribute, no matter how seemingly small. Many of us, perhaps all of us, won't be able to cure cancer or restore vision to the blind, or win a national championship or be on the big screen. Many of us, perhaps all of us, will not be able to start a charity, save an endangered species, or sit in the White House. Yet each of us, in our own unique way, is able to make a unique contribution to society and leave this world just a little bit better than we found it. The story is told of a man who, every day, walked down from his village to the river about a mile away to collect water for his family. The man carried a rod that he draped over his shoulders, and on each end of the rod was a very large bucket. Every day, the man would carry the empty buckets that hung on the rod down to the river and fill them up with water, and trek the mile back to his village so that his family might have water to drink. However, one of his buckets was quite upset, as this bucket had a large crack along its side. With every step the man took on the way home from the river, water would slosh out of the crack, and the bucket felt as if it was not doing its job. One morning, on the way back to the river, the bucket spoke to the man and apologized. I'm, not, I'm sorry for not doing my job, said the cracked bucket. I know how hard you work to bring home water every day, and all I do is waste the water that, that spills from my cracks. I understand if you want to replace me, and I will not object. After thinking for a few moments, the man sat down on the side of the road. He looked at the bucket and he said, I know that you are upset, but I want you on the way home to look at down at your side of the road and then look at the other bucket's side of the road. The cracked bucket remained silent for the remainder of the trip, anxiously awaiting the return home. After the man filled up the buckets, draped the rod across his shoulders and began to walk home, the bucket looked at the ground. To its amazement, it saw a line of beautiful flowers extending all along the side of the path. On the side of the seemingly perfect bucket, there were no flowers. See, says the man, though you have a crack in your side, you make this road more beautiful each and every day you pass. You nourish the flowers with your water and make my trip home much more enjoyable. The bucket had a crack in its side and by all measures should have been considered a failure. The bucket could not do what it was designed to do. But in spite of this obvious defect, the bucket contributed to the world in such a way that it left it more beautiful than it found it, making a unique contribution in its own unique way. USY is such a place. USY is a place where each of us is accepted not in spite of our individuality, not in spite of our uniqueness, but because of it. USY is one of the few places where we are not expected to be a perfect bucket, where in fact none of us are. We each have our cracks, but not at all does this stop us from making our contribution, from, the, from repairing the world in our own small way. While we may strive for perfection, we must realize the importance of the self. 
we must realize that we are unique and be proud of it. The Hasidim tell the tale of Rabbi Zuzia. When the famed rabbi died, he went to stand before the judgment seat of God. And as he waited for God to appear and judge his fate, Rabbi Zuzia grew nervous thinking about his life. He began to demean himself until he was terrified, convinced that he had done nothing of significance in the course of his life, nothing that would justify his admission into heaven. He began to imagine that God would ask him, why were you not more like Moses? Why were you not more like Solomon? Why were you not more like David? But when God appeared, the rabbi was surprised. God simply asked him, why were you not more like Zeusia? While Rav Zuzia was preoccupied with how much he had not accomplished, with how much he was not like the biblical heroes we hear so much about, he forgot what he had actually accomplished. The rabbi forgot that he had made his own unique contribution to the world, and that in spite of what he viewed as his relative insignificance, Rabbi Zuzia forgot that he had made differences in the lives of others, and that he had left his mark on his community. While focusing on the community and how he stood in relation to it, Rabbi Zuzia neglected the importance of the individual and the importance of the self. USY is an organization in which we work to create a Kehillah Kedusha, a welcoming community for all individuals. We strive to support other organizations, support our chapters, and support the elderly, the sick, and the poor. Most importantly, however, we support each other. USY is not only an organization of the community, it is an organization of the individual. And as I said, USY inspired within me a sense of self-confidence that I hope will serve me well in the years to come. Through USY, I've learned that I should trust myself and, if I should fail, I have friends who are there to support me. USY is about growing as an individual and about maturing as a human being. It is about being a mensch. It is about developing a sense of responsibility for the world around you. It is about developing a sense of the importance of the self. It is about acknowledging, as Rabbi Tarfon once said, that we are not obligated to complete the task, but neither are we free to desist from it. It is about doing what we can, about making our own unique contribution to the grand goal of tikkun olam. Pirkei Avot, chapter 4, verse 27. Rabbi Meir used to say, look not at the flask, but at what is in it. USY, when I look at each of you, I see far more than a collective of the best and brightest leaders from across the continent. I see more than the future of Jewish leadership. I see more than what is entirely obvious. Rather, I see a group of individuals I am proud to call my best friends. The year is ending, and in my reflections on times on USY on Wheels, on USY Israel pilgrimage, regional and international conventions, I realize that I, as an individual, have grown. My time in USY, in the shadows of the Kotel and in the halls of Auschwitz, on the edge of the Grand Canyon and in the middle of the Corn Palace, in Los Angeles, New York, and New Orleans, I have been given the opportunity to look deep within my own flask, to figure out who it is that I truly am. But I hope I am not alone. With the conclusion of this year, we are either moving on from USY or we grow one step closer to it. I urge each of you to take advantage of all that USY has to offer and to do what you can to make this world a better place, to become or lay alum, lights unto the world. We recently celebrated Hanukkah, the miraculous victory commemorated by the holiday, culminating with the dedication of the sanctuary in Jerusalem and the rekindling of the menorah is celebrated by lighting the Hanukkah menorah as a symbol of the triumph of freedom over oppression and of light over darkness. We are instructed to light these candles at home and then place the menorah in our windows, reminding us in a most obvious way that illumination and inspiration, though it may begin at home, definitely does not stop there. Such is the nature of light that when one kindles the Hanukkah lights, they are expressly meant to illuminate the outside, symbolically alluding to the duty we all have to bring light to those who, for one reason or another, still walk in darkness. And so we must do what we can. For you do not have to be on USY board or the president of a club to bring light to the world and to others. You do not have to be famous to go out into New Orleans and make a true impact on the lives of others. 
You do not have to be a perfect bucket to leave the world beautiful with flowers in your wake. You do not have to be like Moses, Solomon, or David to achieve greatness. You do not have to ensure that the outside of your flask is so beautiful that you forget the importance of that which resides within. But you do have to do what you can to make this world a better place. And today is only the beginning. Tomorrow is what excites me. So, USY, what are we waiting for? Let's do something extraordinary together. Todah